Kamala versus Bernie on Medicare for All. Trump picks a Paul to run Intel. Will he survive confirmation? Tears, takedowns, and a last minute flight back to the Capitol. The drama at the DCCC continues. I'm Jamal Simmons, and this is why you should care. Democrats have Bernie Sanders to thank for making Medicare for all the hallmark policy of the left to cover all Americans with a government-sponsored health care plan. Some people embrace it whole cloth and others, well, kind of, sort of, in a way. Put Kamala Harris in the latter camp. The California senator and presidential hopeful signed on to Sanders' Senate bill, but she's been looking for a way out of some of its tougher provisions ever since. Today, Harris found one by releasing her version of a Medicare for All plan, and it's a little different than Bernie's. Here's why you should care. The differences are important. Harris's plan still includes Medicare Advantage and private insurers. Bernie's plan bans almost all private insurers. Senator Sanders plans to put a 4% premium on household income over $29,000 to pay for his plan. He asserts that while taxes will rise, eliminating premiums would mean all in, healthcare costs go down. On the other hand, Harris's plan would impose that tax only on households earning more than $100,000 and would raise the threshold for households in high cost areas. Harris also proposes taxes on financial transactions such as stocks and bond trades. Sanders' plan calls for a four year transition to a single payer system, while Senator Harris would have a 10 year transition. Now this is important. Many labor unions have been negotiating for greater benefits like health care in lieu of salary increases. Bernie's plan would wipe out those benefits while Kamala's allows for a glide path away from those deals. Round two of the Democratic primary debates is this week, and though Harris and Sanders won't share the stage, the criticism is already flying. The Trump White House hit us with another personnel shakeup over the weekend. President Trump tweeted yesterday that Director of National Intelligence Dan Coats will be leaving the administration in mid-August. In his place, Trump will nominate Texas GOP Congressman John Ratcliffe. You might remember Ratcliffe from last week's House Judiciary Committee hearing where he criticized Mueller and how he conducted his investigation into Russian interference in the 2016 election. Nowhere does it say that you were to conclusively determine Donald Trump's innocence or that the special counsel report should determine whether or not to exonerate him. I agree with the chairman this morning when he said Donald Trump is not above the law. He's not. But he damn sure shouldn't be below the law, which is where volume two of this report puts him. Here's why you should care. Coates is one of the last remaining appointees of Trump's original national security team. And he's different with the president publicly on a number of issues, including the threat from Russia. Coates is just another in the growing list of dissenters that have been replaced by the president, like former Defense Secretary Jim Mattis and former White House Chief of Staff John Kelly. But the president's defenders counter that Coates dragged his feet on a number of issues, including public disclosure of some classified documents that don't necessarily show either the Obama administration or House Democrats in a favorable light. The bottom line is that Trump is replacing a straight shooter with someone who appears to be much more partisan. National security is perhaps the most important job of any president, and we need President Trump to get this one right. Oh boy, Congresswoman Sherry Bustos barely touched down in her Illinois district for August recess Friday before having to schedule an unplanned trip back to Washington. As we mentioned last week, Black and Latino lawmakers came down hard on the Democratic Congressional Committee chairwoman over a lack of diversity among the campaign's senior management. According to Politico, critics say the DCCC hasn't done enough to reach out to Latino voters or hire consultants of color. On Friday, anger, even tears, flowed at an emergency meeting held to address the diversity disparity at DCCC headquarters. In an email statement also provided to Hill TV, Representative Bustos is coming back to DC to address her staff's concerns over increasing inclusion and implement structural changes. Diversity training was scheduled for August, but it's been moved up amid the outcry. Now, here's why you should care. Democrats have taken pride in being the party of diversity and inclusion across the board from people of color, members of the LGBT community, women, etc. They champion being their defenders. Why then is the Democratic campaign powerhouse not hiring more minorities to sit in top management positions? This issue isn't new. It's been dogging the Democrats for years. Congressman Ben Ray Lujan, who chaired the committee in 2018, took it seriously, 
Black and Latino members seem to be holding Bustos to the same standard. All right, that's all we got for you today. You can catch more of this show and other great content from Hill TV by subscribing to the Hill's YouTube channel and clicking the bell to get notified when new videos are posted. Also, use the hashtag WISC to let us know what you think on social media. I'm Jamal Simmons. You can find more of my work here or at Jamal Simmons on Twitter or at Real Jamal Simmons on Facebook and Instagram. And that's why you should care. See you later.